Before you take your seats, very quickly, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Passion Translation. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Passion Translation. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Passion Translation. If you're there, say amen. amen. We have become his poetry. A recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we will do to fulfill it. Thank you, Jesus, for your word tonight. Thank you for transformation. We give you praise, dear God, in Jesus' name. Please do take your seats. It says, we have become his poetry. We have become his poetry. A recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we will do to fulfill it. Romans 8 verse 28, the Passion Translation. Romans 8 verse 28, the Passion Translation. It says, so we are convinced <clears throat> that every detail of our lives is continually woven together for good. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. I want to teach, I want to chat us very briefly on the character of a purpose-driven woman. Who have been called to fulfill his divine, divine design purpose. If you look at these two scriptures, three points I drew from it. Number one, your purpose came before your birth. Your purpose came before you were born. So in other words, your purpose is older than you. Your purpose came before you were born. It says, even before you were born, God planned in advance. <laughs> before your parents thought of coming together, God had planned you. What an awesome father. Your purpose came before you were born. Two, you need to know Jesus to know your purpose in him. You need to know Jesus to know your purpose in him. Number three, every detail of your life was in consideration for your purpose. Every detail. Your circumstance, your status, your look, where you came from, who gave birth to you. Every detail of your life was considered for his purpose. I think the last one I'll just take is your size or status has no connection with your purpose. It's part of the plan. Your size. Why is this very important? The Bible says in Colossians 2 verse 10 that you are complete in him who is the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. I'm using the Passion Translation. What this means is there are, there, your, how you look, whether you are fat, whether you are slim, whether you are single, whether you are married, it has no connection with your purpose. In other words, if you are fat, you are purposeful. If you are slim, you are purposeful. If you are big, you are purposeful. If you are a woman, you should act purposefully. So whatever be your status, your size, it doesn't in any way limit your function in Christ, your purpose in Christ, because everything was interwoven to fulfill your purpose. Let's look very quickly at the character of the purpose-driven woman. I decided to pick out three or four different stories of some women in the Bible that may not be very loud. We don't talk about them a lot. And I decided to pick these persons because many times when we talk about purpose, people think that you need to be popular to be purposeful. You may not be popular, but does, that doesn't mean that you're not fulfilling your purpose. So I decided to pick, I was careful enough to pick these persons because I've seen some women who tell me, oh, you know, you are the one who is out there, you hold the mic. And they feel like because they're not doing this kind of thing, it means they're not fulfilling purpose. And that's an error. Number one, let's look at the character of Shifra and Poah, the two midwives. 
Shifra and Poa, the two midwives. Exodus 1, verse 15 to 17. They were the midwives. So they were in support. They were supporting the, the women, the Hebrew women that were giving birth. The Bible says in Hebrews 1, 15 to 17, it says, Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was Shifra, and the name of the other, Poa. And he said, When you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women, and see them on the bed stools. If it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But listen. But the midwives feared God. And did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them. But saved the male children alive. One of the characteristics of these midwives is that they were God pleasers. The character of the purpose-driven woman is that you must be a God-pleaser. You must at all times, every day of your life, you must be willing to please God. At the expense of your life. It was a risk that they had to take. Imagine the king of Calabar, for example, saying, You know what? If you pass this path... If you do not obey my command, and the command is negative, it has its, I mean, doesn't align with the standard of God. If you don't obey this part, I'm killing you or I'll kill your family members. This was the story. But they didn't care. They pleased God above men. That's the life of a purpose driven woman. They didn't care what the cost would be. They were not trying to negotiate it. They proposed in their heart that they will please God at every expense. Many times, many of us are too quick to bow to the standard of the world. Many of us are too quick to kill our values. We are too quick to kill the things that God has asked us to do. Because you want to bow so easily to what the world has to offer. You want to bow so easily. It's very easy to just say, ah, it's easy to compromise what's there. The mercy of God is free. The grace of God is free. Many times we are so quick to want to bow to the standards of the world or the things that are against God. Because why? Ah, people will not say that, ah, I'm not, I'm not doing like other people should be doing it. Many people are scared. You rather will fear a man than fear God. The reason why some of you as sisters, as women, have done the things that you have done in your life it's not because you actually wanted to do it, but you were, you quickly compromised, quickly gave up. What will people say? They were God pleasers. It didn't matter what the king had to do. They were really willing to stay there. They were willing to fight for what they believed in. I remember before I got married, people told me that look at you, you are very rigid. Look, you will not marry. Look at you. Be there selecting. Be there say you cannot sleep with this guy. You cannot sleep with this person. You cannot be. You will be there. You will be old and you will die. They even told me, say, look at you. See where you have one coming from. That's how you just continue like that and you will end up not doing anything in your life. I received different things. I worked in a company where everybody, I mean, every of my colleagues were sleeping with both single men and married men. It looked like in that environment, I was the only thing. At the time, I was receiving threats. It was that serious. But I stayed pleasing God. I stayed pleasing. I remember one time, my colleague told me, look at you. You are just there stiff. Very soon, you will not be attracting different kinds of guys. Different things were said to me, my boss, a lot. But I stayed there. Not knowing where I would end up. Of fixing my eyes on Jesus, pleasing him to the end. Many persons have given up on the things that they should do. You have given up on the path that you should walk on because, ah, I want to follow what is training. Look at it. I want to compromise. I say, nah, look at you. You will not end up where. So you have given up on the things that are in alignment with God. A purpose-driven woman is a God pleaser. You please God, no matter what costs you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego understood that they were on a purpose in Babylon. It didn't matter if they were going to die to live in Christ. It didn't matter what it would cost them 
Oh, the king threw them into the fairy furnace. They gave them a condition. He gave them a condition. They were willing to bow to God at the expense of their life. They proposed. Because you see, when you are on purpose, you must propose deliberately. Not to please men. You must propose. Number two, very quickly, the story of Tabitha. The story of Tabitha. The characteristics of Tabitha is that she was hospitable. She was kind. Acts 9 verse 36, Amplified Translation. It says now, Acts 9 36, TPT. It says now there was a follower of Jesus who lived in Joppa. A follower of Jesus who lived in Joppa. Her Aramaic name, Tabitha, means gazelle. Her Aramaic name, Tabitha, means gazelle. She lived her life doing kind things for others and serving the poor. If you look at scripture, the only took just one, one verse, not a full chapter, that Tabitha was mentioned. That's why I said I specifically had to select some women in the Bible so that you can know that you, she, she wasn't popular, but she was purposeful. She wasn't out there. She wasn't in chapters. But you see, she was purposeful. She was there, serving the people, doing kind things, serving the poor till her death. That widows had to gather to say, hey, Peter, please come, 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 come. Tabitha is dead. She was, she was living the life, serving, being kind. Because your home may just be hospitality department in church. Welfare. Your home may just be something that may not look like it's, it's, so, it's so loud. It may, sometimes some of you deviate from what God has told you to do because it's not loud. So if it's not loud, I'm not relevant. If it's not loud, I'm not purposeful. It has to be big. Let me bring it down. There are some of you that God told you specifically to join sanitation department in church. Eh? Clean toilets. So you rather prefer to join choir. But that's not your place. So many of you are here. Just like this example I gave. You have displaced the purpose of God in your life because there is an imagination of what your purpose should really be. Many times you have competed, you have been competing with others because you see it has to be like this. I, if it's not the altar, my purpose is altered. So it must be the altar. I must hold the mic. If I don't hold this mic, how will they hear me? But Tabitha was heard. A city gathered when she died. I may not be purposeful to the whole country, but what about your city? What about your room? What about your room? What about that, your neighbor? Are you, is she seeing Christ in you? Because this thing about purpose is for, for, for men to see the reflection of Christ. What about that, your room? What about that, your neighbor? What about that, your father? What about that, your uncle? What about your church member? She was kind. In her death, she was remembered. If you die tomorrow, will they remember you for K? How much more kind? Who are you? Tabitha. Giving arms to the poor. Hospitable. Women. You have 10 years. People are crying. Your, your church member, your, your colleague. You are seeing the person every time, looking weary, looking anyhow. Your own is, hey, God, God bless you. Then you will not go and gossip about the person. People of purpose don't gossip about people's needs. They fulfill needs. Women of purpose see a gap and they jump in. They don't need their name to be there. But God knows their name. Tabitha, she wasn't everywhere, but she was relevant. When was the last time you had to give out that money? When was the last time that you did not have to be in the hospitality department to be hospitable? It's not a departmental thing. It is a life of a purpose-driven woman. She was kind, regardless, kind to the poor. Come on, small time, they announce. Come, come, you guys, come and contribute. You know, want to do something in church. Hey, church, they started again. Hey, hey, hey. You don't know how to do announcements, but you announce things like this.
She was kind. She lived her life doing things, kind things for others and serving the poor. Number, two, number three characteristic, Jael. Jael. The bold and unpopular warrior. A purpose-driven woman is a warrior. Judges 4 verse 9. Deborah, this was the story of the Israelites. They were under oppression. Deborah said, she said, Barak did not want, the, did not want to go into a battle without Deborah going. So Deborah was a prophetess. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. This was Deborah to, to Barak. For the Lord will sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. Let's look at 17 to 21 very quickly. However, 17 to 21. However, Caesarea had fled away on foot to the tent of Jael. This was the person they were looking for. The wife of Heba, the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the house of Heba, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Caesarea and said to him, Turn aside, my lord. Turn aside to me. Do not fear. And when he had turned aside with her into the tent, she covered him with a blanket. Then he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I'm thirsty. So she opened a jug of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him. And he said to her, Stand at the door of the tent, and if anyone comes and inquires of you and says, Is there any man here? You shall say no. Then Jael, Herbert's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple and he went down into the ground for he was fast asleep and weary so he died if you look at Judges 5 verse 24 the Bible says most blessed among women is Jael the wife of Heba the Kenites blessed is she among women in things Jael was tenacious Jael was bold listen you know what I, read? I got from this scripture there was a prophecy regarding that war that you see Deborah told Barak, I know you are the warrior, you are the leader of the army, but you see, I'm paraphrasing, this victory will not be unto you, but unto a woman. Probably, do, do, could it be that she heard the prophecy? Could it be that she perceived prophecy in her life? But one of the things I realized from this scripture is that even though she knew the prophecy, probably she knew the prophecy over this war, but one thing she did, she did not just hear prophecy, she was positioned. Because purpose-driven woman is positioned in times of warfare. A purpose-driven woman is bold, is positioned in times of warfare. She was a bold but unpopular deliverer. She was positioned. In your positioning with God, you receive boldness. In your positioning with God, you receive courage to do the things that are beyond you. To carry out do you know that people have asked me many times, how do you do the things that you do? I can't explain it. How do you handle this conference? How do you do these meetings? How do you do it? You don't look like it. Because you see, when you are positioned in God for the fulfillment of prophecy over your life, it gives you boldness. It gives you the things that humanly you are not able to do. This was the story of child. She was there position because you see when you are positioned in God he will give you strategy to fulfilling prophecy he'll give you the strategy because of time the last person and then we'll pray Anna the characteristics of Anna is that she was prayerful you can't do purpose without prayers Luke 2 verse 36 to 38 Anna A-N-N-A -N -N -A. Luke 2 36 38 look at the very interesting thing about Anna now there was one Anna, <clears throat> a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years. So she was married for seven years. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years. 84 years. She did not depart from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers, night and day. She lived with her husband seven years. This woman was a widow. 
She didn't allow her circumstance make her deviate. She didn't allow her circumstance make her drop on prayers. She didn't allow her circumstance make her stay without God. You know, sometimes you are so carried away with the things that happen in your life and you will not know when you have left that path. There are some of you here that you used to pray very fervently. You will pray. Sometimes you are sleeping, you are mumbling words. But you see, a lot of things have happened in your life. There were times you were abused. And you're like, no, there is no God anymore. Oh, you lost a loved one. You're like, oh, there is no need to pray anymore. I mean, where is God? Where is God in this? Does God still exist? You have been trying different relationships. The thing doesn't seem to be working. Where is God? You are of a marriageable age, but yet... Men are not coming. You are asking, where is God? There is no need for me to pray. Moana, a widow of 84 years, even though she was a prophetess, waiting for the fulfillment of the redemption of Christ, waiting for the announcement of Christ, she stayed in the temple night and day. She was fervent in prayers. Because you see, a purposeful person is a prayerful person. A purposeless person is a prayerless person. can't fulfill purpose without prayer. She did not allow her status, change her state with God. She didn't. She didn't allow her circumstance change what she needs to draw from God. It wasn't about whatever God can give. It was about her love for Jesus. No wonder scripture that we read earlier. No wonder the scripture that we read earlier in Ephesians 2 verse 10. It says they are lovers of God. So Romans 8 verse 28 says, For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his divine purpose. I need to love God in and out of season. To be able to fulfill that which he has designed for me as a person, I must love him with all my heart to do all that he has given me to do. I want you to rise on your faith this evening. I don't know what state you are in. One of the things God told me was that he will heal people and give them peace of mind. He will bring men, women, into that place where they can dwell. He will make you shift your focus. He will make you fix your eyes on him steadily. He will bring that lady back again. Are you ready for a turn? Are you ready for a new eye in Christ? Are you ready for a revival? Are you ready for him to penetrate your heart? Come on, can you just open your mouth and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, it's a time. But if you can't, just pray in your own understanding. Come on, just raise a sound. Balabosh. Lebrega bana mananosh. Shedela baladosh. Listen, there are many of you here tonight. You're going to receive clarity on that which God has asked you to do, what He has told you to do. Because there are many of you here, you are confused. You're like, ah, am I supposed to go this route? Am I supposed to do this? You don't know what you're supposed to do. But God will open your eyes to see and you receive clarity. Can you raise your voice? Come and raise your voice. Raise your voice, honey streams. Come on, you want to ask him, Lord, there is a place in you that I will get. There is a place. I need depth about my life. I want to pray like never before. I want to fix my eyes on you. I want to see you, Lord, as you see me. Come and raise your voice. Raise your voice. I don't know how many of you are expecting tonight. Come and raise your voice. Raise your voice. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what has happened in your life. But you see, there is a life hidden. Your life is hidden in Christ. There is a life. There is a life hidden in Christ. Your lives are hidden in Christ. He wants to reveal himself. Open your mouth. Shegadam beledos. Hey. 
Hey, there who are those ladies like Anna who will stay regardless of her status, regardless of what has happened, regardless of anything that has happened, regardless of circumstance? It doesn't matter whether I'm broke, but I stay on Jesus. There is a race, there is a race in front of us, there is a race that we must. We must run. There are some of you here. Yeah, you have things that are waiting you. You want to drop it tonight. You want to lay aside every weight. Everything that has beset you. Everything that has limited you. Come and raise your voice. On his streams, women, raise your voice. Come on, put, present everything. Surrender all to him. I will pray. I will press. Forgetting about the things that are behind and looking forward. For the race in front of me. Forget what has happened to my parents. Forget what has happened to my academics. I will press. Raise your voice. Raise your voice, women. Raise your voice. I, the angels of the Lord are here. There are two angels in this hall already. I beg you. The Lord wants to visit. Is a fresh dew dropping? Women, raise your voice. Prophetess who will open their eyes and they will begin to pick signals more than ever. There is a lady here, as a matter of fact. God said, I should tell you, you will not only see for yourself, but you will not see for many. And I hear you are raising nations. Nations, 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 nations. I beg you to raise your voice. Raise your voice. Tell her, Mama, 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 Listen, listen, listen very well. I don't know who is like me. I came from a family where females are not regarded. Where it looks like females don't, when they have to gather for a meeting, females are not called. Where females are neglected. Where you say, ah, females can't amount to anything. But listen, here I am today. You can be anything in God. If you decide to pray. If you decide to fix yourself on Jesus. If you decide to give your all to him. If you decide to give your all. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter the things that you have been through. But can you pour it on on Jesus? Come on, raise your voice. Raise your voice. Lebrama. However you want to do, if you want to cry, come on, pour it all on him. Allah, mommy. Shene le gabe. Allah, de de bele des. Telebre ke bele kopo. Shene de lebra kala dos. Eleba ke bala kale dos. Allah, mama, mama, mama. Eleba le le dos. Telebre ke le kale dos. Telebre ke bala kala dos. Hey! Holy Ghost, there is a place. There is a place. There is a place deeper than me. There is a place deeper than where I come from. Hey, 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 hey. My heart cries. There is a place. There is a place. It is a place where the bones are hidden. Celebrate, 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 celebrate,
Celebra que alegre dos. Celebra que alegre dos. Alebra que alegre dos. Hey, hey, ay, 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 Let me know you more. Hey, regardless of the mockery, I'll be here. I will be here worshiping. I will be here worshiping. I will be here worshiping. There is a place that I'm yearning for. It's a place where deep calls to the deep. Lift up your hands, everyone. Silence. Just the strings. Bring it high a bit. Just bring your strings high. Just be tuned, everyone. Be tuned, everyone. No movements. The Holy Ghost is here. Just fix your gaze on Jesus. Silence. Just lift up your hands. Oops. There is someone here saying, Lord, not me. It can't be me that you will use. But he's saying, I have called you by name. And I'm rewriting every story again. I'm making it new with you again. He says, do not give up. Do not stay on that thing that have easily condemned you. I am God. I am God. I am God, and I have called you by name. The Lord is healing that person right now. The Lord is touching you. The Lord is touching you. The Lord is touching you. He's touching you. He's touching you. He said, forgive you. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. He's enveloping you with peace. You will feel the cool wind around you right now. You'll feel the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Shana mama leila, shana na mama 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 la, but I get that another dose. Shana mama days, Holy Ghost, hmm, Holy Ghost. Yes, alaba, shana ma. I hear clarity, clarity, clarity. There are three of you. You have been so confused. As a matter of fact, this was one of your prayer points coming here today. The Lord says, "I've answered you." You don't need to say amen. Just be silent. Just fix your gaze on him. Just be silent. I've heard you. I've heard you. I've heard you. You shall receive a visitation tonight. I say you don't need to say amen. Just be silent. You shall receive a visitation tonight. You shall see me more than ever. And there are two of you here. You've just heard specific words consigning your life specific words concerning your life you just received it one of the signs to know that you have received from him is that you're gonna receive a hit on your palm you literally feel your palm really hot really hot it's the power of the holy ghost it's the power of the holy ghost it's the power of the holy ghost it's coming on you it's coming on you it's coming on you strong it's coming on you strong it's coming on you very strong oh thank you holy ghost thank you holy ghost thank you holy ghost 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm here in my spirit. There are two ladies here. There are two ladies here. You, 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 you function in the prophetic. You function in the prophetic. You function in the prophetic. The oil of the Holy Ghost is going to drop on you fresh. 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 You are crying. Fresh. 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 And I hear go ye forth and revive men. Talabosh. Telelelelewa. Telekobonenemana. Sigidida. I beg you not to be a spectator. The power of the Holy Ghost is here. Is here, is here. There are three ladies now. The power of the Holy Ghost is touching your hands right now. It's touching your hands right now. Oh my God. There's somebody I see. I see a crown on your head. It says the crown of glory. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. The mighty things I will do through you is you, my daughter. 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 Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Such as I have, I give to you this day. You will walk in heights. You will walk on strange grounds. You, you, you. You will no longer be directionless. For the I have called you. I will lift you up above your parents. Your status will not be small. It is you. It is you. Oh my God, I hear the Deborahs. The Deborahs, where are they? Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. The hand of the Lord is touching you. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my God, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Eleba, the Deborahs, Deborahs. The Deborahs, Deborahs. Receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Hey. Hey, 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 There's one of you here, you have been so scared. The Lord is boldening you. I hear his boldness. The anointing that makes you bold. You will war like Esther. It will start with your family. Yes, yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It will begin with your family. It will begin with your family. Yes, you are the one. You are not small. The Lord says, you are not small. Oh my God, there's an angel standing beside this lady. Look at you, a mighty warrior. A mighty warrior. A mighty warrior. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, mama, mene, mene, la. Hey, hey, hey. A mighty warrior. I will use you mightily. Ane, kapa. Tele, le, mene. Tele, be, me, me, be, be. Let no man trouble you. It is for you. It's a prophecy for somebody. For I bear upon you the mark of favor, the mark of authority. It is you. Oh my God, I see an angel. This row. This row. Take it. This row. Take it. Take it now. Take it now. Holy Ghost. This row. This row. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. It's coming strong. It's coming strong. Holy Ghost. You are the one. You are the one. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Who told you a woman is low? Who told you she can't do nothing? Who told you that she's limited? I know they told your mom and she fell by the wayside. But the Lord says, not you, not you. Hey, I want to use you to restore beauty for arches for your mom. You are the one. You are the back. Is you. Is you all. It's you. I, I see the embrace of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Beautiful arches. <laughs> it's you. There is a place, my daughter. There is a place in that campus for you. You are a student. It's you. It's you. Oh my God, it's you. It's you. Look at you. You are shining. Oh my God. 
You are my armor bearer. That's what I'm hearing. The hand of the Lord will come upon our students now. Go yeah to universities and go and spread my gospel. I will strengthen you. You will lift my banner. You are the seal of my authority. You are the one. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yes, it's coming stronger. You are going to scream loud. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't resist him. You can't resist him. Right about now, I see 10 of you. The Lord is touching your tongue. It's a new trance. Hey, the spirit of prayer is coming upon this house now. Now, now, now. Oh my God, there are 10 of you. There are 10 of you. Ooh, five of you among these 10, you are intercessors. Hey, you will pray. You cannot resist it all. It's coming strange tongues. Hey, strange tongues. Strange tongues. <laughs> there is a place. There is a place. Oh. There is a place. Strange tongues. Oh. They are ten. They are ten. The Lord is baptizing. It's an invasion of the Holy Ghost. That's what He's doing with you. He's doing with you in the choir. He's doing it with you. Hallelujah. He's doing it with that usher. Take it now. Take it now. Tamome. Tamome. There are two of you. This row. This row. There are two of you. Take it. Take it. Take it. Two of you, take it now. In the middle, in the middle, take it. Yes, 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 yes. You will go on your knees and pray. You will roar. You will roar the shouts of Jesus. Everywhere you go, you will stand. You will press for greater heights for the people. The power of the Holy Ghost is heavy. It's heavy. Don't be a spectator. Toku boobe. Toku boobe, baby. Listen now. You are going to count five times the name of Jesus. You are going to shout. Forget about what the Holy Ghost is doing with your neighbor. I want you to be here. I want you to be tuned. Oh my God, there's this person here. There's this person here. I see the hand of the Lord too heavy on your head. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, man. It's coming heavier. It's coming heavier. Tell you, baby, baby, baby. Tell me, baby, baby, baby. You will shout the name of Jesus. Everything that has limited you to die, it will live. Everything that has limited you, the dreams you had that have put you under oppression, it will bow. You are going to shout the name of Jesus. I beg you, don't be distracted. Something is happening already. When I count to one, listen, oh, you will shout Jesus. Make sure it comes from the depth of your belly. Hey, every wrong pattern from your father's house gives way. Enough is enough. The devil is a bastard. Addiction dies. Every spirit of fear dies. Enough is enough. We will not go the same way we have come. We are going to shout the name of Jesus five times. And the Holy Ghost will begin to do his work. Begin to do his surgery. Are you ready, honey streams? One. Hey, hey, hey. Look at these two ladies. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Hey, 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 hey. The Lord is bringing you to alignment. My God, my God, my God. My God, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Those two ladies, Holy Ghost. Help me, help me find them. Help me find them. Bring them out, bring them out. Ha <laughs> Two. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Who told you your father's house is limited? Help me, help me, help me. Bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. My God, something is happening here. 
Hey, I see plants uprooted. Plants uprooted. Oh, the devil is a bastard. Oh. He's a bastard devil. Three. Hey, hey, hey. I see garments of struggles. My God, my God. Garment has covered you for five years. I hear, I hear. I hear my spirit. I'm not only delivering her. But you see, I'm pouring a new horn of oil. Aye, 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 it's you, it's you, it's you. Take it, take it, take it, take it. My God, my God, my God. You can't resist it all. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Tell her, 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 tell her. You reverend spirit, I address you tonight. Pack your load and go. You, you, you. Pack your load and go. You have no business in that body. Your time is up. Your time is up, oh. Your time is up. Four. This is the last shout. You are going to put your hands on your head. I didn't come for my neighbor. I came for myself. It's between me and Jesus. Everything that is not of me. Everything that is not of God in my life. Alabosh. The glory. Your glory is on your head. The Lord has anointed with your head with oil. So anything that is not of him, he leaves. You're going to shout Jesus the last time. And things will begin to break. Hey, hey. There's going to be a deep penetration. The Holy Ghost will be piercing you. You will literally feel it around your belly. Hey, hey. You shouted without me saying. Listen, there is somebody here, your mom. Alabosh. There's a kind of sickness that has held her for long. And you see, it's a pattern in your family to be giving one kind of affliction. And the Lord says, do not fear. You're not just scared for your mom, but you're scared that it's coming to you. It's for you. The Lord says, fear not. Fear not. He said, fear not. Oh, I have heard you. He said, I should tell you, I have visited you. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, can I see that lady? Can I see, I want to place my hand on you. If you are the one, run out, run out. Very fast, run out, run out, run out, run out. Lift up your hands. Tell her, just stand up, everybody here. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yahweh Tell her, man, I lift up your hands. Solo. Lift up your hands. The fire of the Holy Ghost will come on you now. Oh, and the fire will identify that person now. It is really for you. The fire of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three, four, five. Help her, help her. Ele, Ele, Ele. He said, I should tell you no more, no more. No more, no more, no more, no more. <laughs> the devil is a bastard. A new beginning has started with you. No more, no more. 